It's so good, isn't it, to be in the house of the Lord, and it's uh, quite an experience to stand here and, and to look out on all these beautiful, happy, smiling faces. Thank you for being in God's house today. Because we appreciate that at this time of year, particularly for, for Change Point, for this facility, for this site, um, it does present a few limitations and we feel the pressure of it at this time of year. This is when we feel our limitation in terms of the seating capacity, uh, our car park capacity, and it's great to see so many of you come out as families because we appreciate this time of year, it can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, we've parented uh, four children through those early years, we know what it's like sitting through a service and the challenges that presents. So well done for being here. But friends, there is no limit to the presence and power of God in this place today. So Holy Spirit, we pray right now that the t for the touch of heaven on every life, from the very youngest, Lord, from the, from the pre-born that are in this house today, right through, Lord, to those who are well advanced in years, Holy Spirit, we ask now for the touch of heaven on every life. Let there be something, Lord, that there be an encounter today with you, Lord, that will not only strengthen and encourage and build up, but will transform every life. That your glory, Lord, may be seen in us, through us, and amongst us. In Jesus' name, amen. Inspiration for my uh, few words this morning is, is threefold, really. Uh, firstly, I was inspired by, by what Pastor Linda had to share last Sunday. So thank you, Pastor Linda. And friends, if you, whether you're part of the Change Point uh, family or not, there is something in that message uh, for each and every one of us. So particularly for Change Pointers, but for each and every one of us. So if you weren't here last week, you're able to pick that up. Just find Change Point on YouTube and you'll find uh, that message there, a, a, a critical message uh, for us as we come into the new year. So I've been inspired by that. I've also been inspired by a word I felt the Lord uh, shared with me personally uh, for this year. And it comes out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. And it's a very short verse that says, We live by faith and not by sight. Now, when you get a, a word like that at the beginning of the year, you're kind of left wondering kind of what's in store, what's around the corner this, this year. For we live by faith and not by sight. And the third inspiration for the few words I want to share with you this morning comes out of a visit that Sue and I made last Sunday. Uh, we sat on the bedside of a young man in the spinal unit at uh, Otara. And there was a lot of things that came out of that conversation uh, that have been an inspiration for me and some of that I'd like to share with you this morning. But friends, the reality of our walk through this life is that, that for the most part, what comes our way is unexpected. It's unforeseen. It's unplanned. So how do you and I, as Christ followers, how do we live this life that is, that is marked by the unseen? and by the unexpected and by the unplanned. When, when things, as it were, just come out of the blue or come from left field or however we might phrase it, how do you and I, as Christ followers, walk out our lives given that reality? How many, how many planners do we have in the room? How many of you love to sort of plan out life. So you've probably already looked at 2016 and there's things already in your diaries. There's things already in whatever calendars you use and whatever devices. So, so this is an approach to life that is very well planned. We celebrate you. Here's a, here's a couple of key, key scriptures for the planners. A couple of verses for you as you start your year. Psalm 37 verse 23. The Lord delights In a person's way, I'm, I'm thinking of it in, in the older version, which it's the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. In the NIV, it talks about the Lord delighting in a person's way. If the Lord delights in a person's way, he makes their steps firm. Same verse, a, a good, great word for the planners. Here's another one, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. In their heart, a person plans their course, but the Lord determines their steps. 
And I guess my, my prayer and the prayer for planners is, Lord, will you order, will you determine my steps in 2016? Yeah, plan, absolutely. But just put that, that prayer alongside your planning. Lord, please, will you order my steps this year? Will you go before me? Will you be the one, Lord, who actually decides where my feet will rest this year? Now, some of you are probably at the other end of the spectrum whose approach to life is far more what we say spontaneous. Okay, so we have the planners there, and then we have those of you, it's like 2016, what? When did that happen? It's kind of like, we'll just see what eventuates this year, and, and, and that's an approach to life, and then probably for the most part, we're somewhere kind of in between. And friends, as we look forward into 2016, uh, there will already be some things about this year that you know, and that you can reasonably expect will happen this year. Some of those things are uh, the consequences of decisions that have been made in the past or pre-existing circumstances. Sometimes those decisions and choices are, are out of our control. But already there'll be a number of things as we look forward into 2016, a number of things that are already we could reasonably expect will happen. Some of those things will be there because we've planned it that way. But friends, who knows that life doesn't always go to plan. Not everything goes to plan. So how do you and I walk a life where not everything goes to plan? The journey through life is full of the unforeseen and the unexpected and the unplanned. It's full of what I love to call God's surprises in our lives. The road through life is marked by twists and turns. And friends, you and I can't know what's around the corner. Now, sometimes the Lord may just give us a little bit of glimpse into, into what is coming our way. But in my experience, it, that has never been so perfectly clear that we have this wonderful, uh, clear picture of what lies ahead. Yes, he may give some little sort of prophetic insights to what the year may hold. But for me, it's never been such a clear picture that I've now say, well, this is definitely the way things are going to go this year. We visited, as I said, a young man in the spinal unit last Sunday as, when I sat with him. Now, when this young man uh, kissed his wife goodbye and, and his little then uh, 16-month-old daughter, he didn't know within a few minutes that he was going to be involved in, in, in a horrific accident that was gonna leave him uh, fighting for his life and now facing the reality, other than the Lord doing something incredibly miraculous, he's facing the reality of doing life without the use of anything from his waist down. In January, the 1st of January 2011, when we text our kids, Happy New Year, we didn't know that within a few months we'd be standing on the stage and gathered with our family saying goodbye to our youngest. Friends, we don't know what's around the corner. But our story is your story. As I go through this, if I could go through this room this morning, each and every one of you would have a story to share about when the unexpected and the unplanned has, has kind of gate-crashed your party. Now, sometimes those are great things, they're wonderful things, and we celebrate those. But sometimes those circumstances are very hard, they're very difficult, and they're very painful. But friends, this is life. This is life. You're glad you came to church today? <laughs> I stole that line from Pastor Linda. But this is life. This is the reality of our life. And 2016 will be no different. No matter how well planned or not our life is, the unexpected will come our way. Unexpected joys will come into our lives this year. And we'll celebrate those also unexpected sorrows. There'll be unexpected pleasures and unexpected pain. How then do we walk in, this, in the face of this reality? Well, let me just share a couple of quick thoughts with you this morning. I was reminded that our walk is a walk by faith. The walk, the journey through life is a walk of faith. It's not a walk by sight. Friends, our lives in Jesus Christ are based upon certainties, assurances, and convictions that transcend the uncertainties of this life. Let me say that again. The, 
We walk by faith, which means that, that our lives in Christ are based upon certainties and assurances, upon realities, upon convictions that transcend the uncertainties of life. And aren't you glad about that? The visit to this young man reminded me that if I am to focus on the circumstances of my life, it can easily lead to disappointment, even despair, to hurt and to hopelessness, to resentfulness, bitterness, and brokenness. And it's so important to keep hope alive in our hearts. And as we shared with this young man, we could, we could sense that, that he was honest and facing his reality, but he was choosing to keep hope alive in his heart. And friends, that's what faith does. That's what walking by faith does. It keeps hope alive in our hearts. We're to fix our eyes upon Jesus. He is the author. He is the beginner. He is the initiator of our faith. But he is also the one that will bring it to completion. He'll bring it to perfection. So in the light of of this journey of life, as we walk it with all its unexpected and all this uncertainty. We are to keep our eyes not focused on the circumstances that come our way, but focused upon Jesus Christ. To keep focused upon knowing him. I love the exhortation Pastor Linda gave us last Sunday about knowing him, about knowing his will, knowing his purposes for our lives, about knowing his ways. That's the life of devotion, about knowing God, knowing his will, knowing his purposes for our life, knowing his ways. So the questions when, when difficult things do come our way, when the, when the unexpected does gate crash our party this year, the question is not why did this happen, but Lord, what are you doing in me? Lord, what are you doing in my life? What are you doing, Lord, to... to, to um, to conform this life to the image of Jesus Christ? What are you doing, Lord, that will draw me closer to you, that I might know you deeper, that I might understand more of of your will and your purpose for my life, that I might understand, God, more of your ways? It seems to be a far more productive question than the why question. Friends, what are you believing for in 2016? What are your hopes and your dreams, what are your desires? And I'm not so much just thinking of the the stuff that you would love to have in your life. What I'm thinking of, what are your hopes and dreams in regard to what God wants to do in your life and through your life? What are your hopes and dreams in terms of God's purposes for you? Why has God picked you to be part of his dream team? Friends, you and I can look forward to 2016, knowing that, yes, there will be the unexpected, and yes, there will be the unplanned, but we can look forward to 2016, that even in the unforeseen, even in the unforeseen, the Word of God reminds us that that He is at work, that God is at work in us, to will and to act according to what? His good purpose. We walk by faith in a way that transcends the uncertainties of life. So if if you're into making resolutions and, and are a little bit late making them, here's one to resolve. Resolve this year to walk by faith and less by sight. Life is also a walk of trust. Trust is a relational issue. Trust is a relational issue. Trust is built. Trust is also destroyed in the context of relationship. Trust is strengthened, but also weakened in the context of relationship. Trust is formed as we get to know a person, as we get to know their heart, as we get to know their nature and their their character qualities. Trust is, is formed. And friends, if we are to walk the journey of life well, then it has to be with a deep trust in God. It has to be in a deep trust in God. (coughs) 
Friends, if you have put your life in his hands, then that's where it is. Don't be tempted to take it back. If you've put your, your life in, in God's hands, then that's where it is. Our lives are in his hands. And perhaps some of us need to hear that as we face an uncertain year. That your life and my life are in the hands of Almighty God. And you couldn't find a safer pair of hands. Particularly when, when the unexpected comes your way. Maybe this is a year for us to deepen our trust in his love. To deepen our trust in the love that he has for each and every one of us. To deepen our trust in the goodness of God. Because sometimes, friends, when the, call, when the curveballs come our way, one of the, the challenges that it presents to us, and often that little whisper of Satan that, well, God isn't good, because a good God would never allow these kind of things. But friends, let me encourage you, when the unexpected happens, and when those things come our way, use them to deepen our trust in the goodness of God. God is good, always. I love this little um, helpful hint that someone gave me once. They said, um, when you're facing life generally, but when you're facing the difficulties of life, be reminded that nothing comes into your life. Nothing comes into my life other than through the love of God. Nothing. Nothing will come into your life or my life other than through the love of God other than through the goodness of God. And God is able to take each and everything, every circumstance that would seem to us hard and difficult, God is able to take every circumstance and use it for the good of those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose. And those things only come to us through the love of God. That is the life of faith. Let us learn to trust in his love, trust in his goodness, trust in his faithfulness. As you think back over this past year, and hopefully you take a moment to do that, because one of the things it will do, it will demonstrate the, not only the love of God in your life, and not only the goodness of God in your life, but the incredible faithfulness of God in your life. God is faithful. He keeps his word. He keeps his promises. He never lets us down. Let's deepen our trust in him this year. Let's resolve in our hearts that we will not only walk by faith, but we will walk with an ever-deepening trust in the love of God and his goodness, in his character, in his nature. Let us remain anchored to him. Allow the unexpected to deepen, not weaken your trust. Allow the unexpected to, to deepen, to strengthen your trust and not weaken it. Don't let it erode the love of God. Don't let it erode the goodness of God, the greatness of God, or any of those other aspects of his nature. I love this little phrase. Someone once said, I may not know what the future holds, but I can know him who holds the future. I may not know what the future holds, but I can know him who holds the future. So when I get a, a personal word that says we walk by faith and not by, or we live by faith and we walk by faith and not by sight. Whatever the year unfolds and whatever of the unforeseen and the unplanned that comes my way, I'll be well prepared for that if I've got to know him who holds the future. If I've got to know him in an ever-deepening way, an ever-deepening appreciation of his love and his grace and his mercy and his goodness, his faithfulness and all those other qualities that are part of this amazing God who, who loves us, then you and I will be well prepared, friends, to face a life 
where the unforeseen and the unexpected and the unplanned will come our way. If we are willing to to allow the Spirit of God to train us to live a life of faith and not to be so reliant and to have our lives so determined by, by the circumstances that come our way, then, friends, we'll be better prepared to walk that life as, as part of the dream team, a part of those who God has handpicked to be in his team this year. So let's remain anchored to him. Let's allow the unexpected to deepen and not weaken our trust in him. Let's determine this year to know him who holds the future. He knows what's around the corner. You and I cannot, but he does. He knows what to us might be unexpected, but to him it's not an unexpected event. Let's purpose in our hearts to know him this year. And let's put everything through that filter. Let's filter everything through the love and the goodness of God. Knowing that he is able to make all things work together for the good of those who love him. So Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you firstly for who you are. Lord, you've revealed so much of yourself to us through the word of God, and we, we see the way that you walked with the, you journeyed with the people of Israel. We've seen your character outworked there, but your word reminds us that you have, in and through our Lord Jesus Christ, that you have declared and disclosed who you are in your fullness. And Lord, we thank you for all your qualities and your character. We thank you for all of the things that, that we've seen just through our own experience of life about who you are. We've seen your love. We've seen your goodness. We've seen your greatness. We've seen, God, your faithfulness. We've seen your mercy and your forgiveness. We've seen, God, all these different facets of your character, Lord. And on the basis of that, we thank you that you are the only sure and certain rock to which our life can be anchored, particularly, God, in uncertain times. And so, Lord, we make a choice at the beginning of another year to reconnect and to anchor our life to you, our Lord God. For you to be that rock, for you to be that anchor, Lord, to be that, to be what we need, God, when our lives seem so, so fragile, Lord, and so uncertain. And we don't know what's around the corner, God, but we thank you, you do. We thank you, God, you've planned and you've purposed a road ahead for us. So as we set the course of this year, Lord, we do so, praying as the psalmist might, Lord, that you would order our steps, that, God, you will determine the course for us this year. And so, Lord, we submit every plan that we are inclined to make. We submit it, Lord, to you. And we say, Lord, will you set the course? Will you determine our steps? God, will you order our lives this year? That our lives, God, is, might be for the, for the glory of God, whatever comes our way. Lord, there will be a testimony to the goodness and to the love of our incredible God. So, Lord, we ask for these things, and Lord, we pray this morning that you will help us, Lord, to walk a life of faith. Lord, I'm only beginning to understand what that means, to walk, Lord, a life of faith. Because, God, I know, as your word says, that it's only that kind of life that really brings you pleasure. You are pleased, God, when we walk our lives in that way. And let's rely on God upon the circumstances or what we see, Lord. Help us to walk by faith. And, Lord, will you help us to deepen our trust in you, Lord, this year. Lord, that we may walk, look back upon this year and it will have been a good year, not because necessarily every circumstance has been favorable, Lord, or everything about this year has been good in that sense, God, but it will be, have been a great year because, Lord, we've walked it by faith and we've got to know you better, Lord, and we've got to understand more of your purposes for our lives and we've walked in those, Lord, and we've understood more of what it means to trust you, Lord. So, Heavenly Father, we commit um, ourselves, we commit this year to you. Lord, 
in a fresh way. We just surrender right now, God. We surrender our lives to you afresh. So here am I, Lord. Will you take this life of mine? Will you use it, God, for your, for your glory and for your honor? Will you, Lord, we submit this corporate life of change point to you again because everything that was said this morning, God, relates to us in our corporate journey as well. Lord, that we may walk this journey as a, as a journey of faith. Lord, allowing everything that comes our way, everything unforeseen or the unexpected and the unplanned. Lord, using it as opportunities to, to deepen our relationship with you. And opportunities, Lord, for you to be given glory and honor. Opportunities, God, for your kingdom to be extended in us and through us. So, Lord, as we go now from this place and on about our daily life, God, we just take a moment to bless each and every one. We bless every child in this place today, God, even the unborn amongst us. God, we bless them. Lord, we bless our young people. We thank you for our children, God. We we thank you for our, our young people, God. We thank you for every life right through to the most seniors amongst us, God. Let everyone be blessed. Now we go in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, may we go knowing that our lives are in your hands, that whatever tomorrow brings, nothing, God, could separate us from your love. Nothing, Lord, in this life, nothing in the life to come, nothing above, nothing below. Lord, no difficult circumstance or good. Nothing, Lord, can separate us from the love of God that is in ours in Christ Jesus so, Lord, we commend ourselves to your goodness and grace. And, Lord, help us to walk this life with courage, to walk it by faith, with a deep and profound trust in our amazing God. You are so trustworthy. We thank you, Lord. We bless you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.